out of your belly, share of love, rivers of living water, oh yeah, out of your belly, share of love, rivers of living water, y'all help me sing, out of your belly, share of love, rivers of living water. Welcome to the Men of Integrity, men that rescue men and women. And as always, we're delighted that you've joined us for a journey through the Word of God. It is our greatest experience when we experience the power of God. It is our greatest experience when we can feel the love of God and when He illuminates our hearts and minds to let us know that John 3 and 16 is so very real. When He says to us, God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son. Whosoever believeth in him will not perish, but shall have everlasting life. My brothers and sisters, that's a true fact. And so we invite you to call a neighbor and call a friend and tell them the men of integrity is on the air. And there's a word for you. Apostle J.L. Fisher, our co-host, Pastor of St. Center, Colleen and Coppers Cove. Yeah, God is certainly a good God. Praise the name of the Lord. And um, what, can we, what can we say? Uh, if it was the, the psalm that said, if it wasn't for the Lord on my side, where would I be? <laughs> Amen. I think we all can attest to that fact. Mm -hmm. yeah. Even when the, when, the, when the writer picked it up and says, I would have fainted. Mm -hmm. At least I believed to see the goodness of the Lord in, in the, the land, land of, of the, the living. living. Yeah. We are living in perilous times. Mm -hmm. We're living in tough times and difficult times. But God is the same. Mm -hmm. He has not changed. His love for you is still the same. Mm -hmm. So we want to talk a little bit with you tonight about God has not abandoned you. And so you got to keep your praise. Mm -hmm. You have to continue to do what God has purposed mm -hmm. for you to do in your life. Apostle, the enemy tries so very hard to overwhelm us and to, mm -hmm. to break our focus so that we will not fulfill our purpose and destiny in the earth. Yeah, and, and, and uh, you know, uh, the enemy, he's still, he's still the same, Bishop. Uh, he tries to um, deceive us and to uh, make us think that God doesn't love us and God uh, doesn't want the best for us and God is trying to keep something from us. He's mm -hmm. the same, the same old tactics that he used in the garden, he's still using today. You're so right. The Word of God is found in Genesis 39 and 2. Mm -hmm. It says, the Lord was with Joseph so that he prospered and he lived in the house of his Egyptian manager. And when you go back at Genesis 37, 24, we find the real foundation of Joseph's story in life mm -hmm. where his brothers took jealousy uh, against him. And the writer says they took him and threw him in the pit. The pit was empty and there was no water in it. Mm -hmm. And so the significance of the writer saying that the pit was empty and there was no water in it signifies to us that they had left him to die. Mm -hmm. You know, they was hoping and believing that he would not make it. But when you go back and look at chapter 39 and verse two, it says the Lord was with Joseph so that he prospered and he lived in the house of his Egyptian manager. God has not abandoned us regardless of what it looks like, feel like, or even sounds like. Yeah, and, and uh, well, you know, we kind of already know the end of the story how that, you know, things may start off bad, mm -hmm. but in the end, God makes it work for our good. Yeah. And so um, it's not so much what's happening now, Bishop, it, what does it mean later? Uh, absolutely. We're trying to encourage you tonight because again, these are perilous times. These mm -hmm. are hard times. These yeah. are times which the Bible speaks about. Yeah. It talks about hardship is almost as common as breathing. The question is not if, but when mm -hmm. will we find ourselves in one of these painful pits of life? Mm -hmm. and at the same time, you know, 
trials, they come and there's so much uncertainties, but we got something to cling to. Mm -hmm. We got something to hang our hope on, to fasten Amen. our hope on, and that's Jesus Christ that's right. and his word. That's right, and, um, and he's our anchor. You know, the wind can blow, the floods can come, uh, and try our houses from the bottom, winds from every side, even from the top, but we got an anchor. And yes. I like that, you know, you think about a ship in the water, it might be moving around and everything, but it's not going anywhere. That's right. If it's got that anchor. That's right. And so um, uh, it may blow us around, you know, it may beat up on us and we may rock from one side to another, but we are connected to the anchor the anchor that never moves. In fact, I was reading just morning, Bishop. Uh, he asked uh, the disciples, he said, whom do men say that I am? Mm -hmm. And they said, some say you're Jeremiah. Some say one of, you're one of the prophets. He said, but who do you say I am? That's the most important thing. And uh, Peter said, thou art uh, 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 the Christ, uh, the son of the living God. And then Jesus went on to say, he said, Peter, he said, you're just a little stone. Mm -hmm. That's kind of the gist of it. He said, but on this rock, I'll build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. We got to be anchored to that rock. Yes. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. You know, Apostle, sometimes people think that when we talk on these terms mm -hmm. about the word of God, that we're trying to be a superhero mm -hmm. or we're trying to be whatever. It's not the fact that we're trying to be superheroes or we're trying to be whatever. It's just that we are at a point in our faith mm -hmm. that nothing shakes our foundation because mm -hmm. we have come to know who God is and mm -hmm. we've come to believe that God is who he says he is and he can do what he says he can do. When you look at 2 Corinthians chapter 1 and verse 20, he says, for all the promises of God in him are yes, and in him amen, yeah. to the glory of God yeah. through us. You know, we gotta draw the line somewhere. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we, we're either gonna have to believe that God is faithful, or we're gonna have to believe that God is not faithful. Mm -hmm. And the things that we're going through as individuals, as, as families, uh, you know, and all of this stuff that's happening in our world today, we gotta know in whom we believe. And we right. have to know in whom the arm of the Lord is revealed, what Isaiah 53 and one says, mm -hmm. you know, and, and, and Satan is trying to overwhelm the believer with things from every direction but the word of God is true. And yeah. the God that we serve is powerful and the God that we serve is always in control and nothing catches him by surprise. And this is where we have to go as a people of God in our storms, be encouraged that God has not abandoned us. Yeah, and, and you know the people, and today, you know, with so many things going on, people are just saying that, man, the world is just falling apart. But no, it's not falling apart as far as God is concerned. It's falling in place. Yes, sir. And it will um, be what God says it will be. And so we just got to, we got to hold on to that um, yes. and, and stand. Uh, again, when I was reading this morning, uh, uh, um, uh, they were, uh, the, 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 um, Jesus had made a statement, Bishop, and he said, beware of the, Leaven of the Pharisees, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and um, they, um, the disciples, begin to discuss among themselves. He said, "Why is he saying that? He's saying because we, we left, we don't have no bread or something like that." And Jesus perceived what they were saying. He said, "He said, oh, thou of little faith." Mm -hmm. He said, "Now can't you remember? We fed the five thousand. Can't you remember? We paid the four thousand. Uh, uh, and you were talking still about bread, mm -hmm. you know, so we have to, we have to increase our faith That's right. and every little thing that God is doing miraculously, we've got to remember that. And then we got to build on top of that, you know? And so bread is never going to be the issue, mm -hmm. not when he's fed 4,000 and 5,000. So why are we still talking about bread? <laughs> You're so absolutely right. You know, I'm thinking about Isaiah 59 and 19. Mm -hmm. 
it says that when the enemy comes in like a flood, there you go. the Spirit of God will raise a standard against him. And, you know, and I want to say to, to, to you tonight that are listening, you know, sometimes living for God is a real battle and it's a real fight, you know, and you have to resist the enemy with the word of God. All right. All you right, have I to like have that. the word of God, not only in your heart mm -hmm. that you might not sin against him, uh -huh. but you got to have the word of God not in your mouth. All right. So all right. that you can begin to speak the things of God when the enemy is trying to, to overwhelm us. You know, Matthew 28, 20 and the latter part of that, it gives us a assurance. And he says, lo, I am with you always, mm -hmm. even unto the end of the world. In our brokenness, in our tears, God is a real God. God is a and apostle, God. you know, I get calls on us on a daily basis where people are struggling and people are going through and, and this, that, and the other. But you have to have an assurance that comes through a relationship yeah. that you have with Jesus Christ, knowing that he is the author, the finisher of our faith. He's our shade upon our right hand. <laughs> you know, he's our, right. our light unto our path, a lamp unto our feet. You know, he is everything that we need. Yeah. Uh, you know, the problem is it with Bishop that, you know, we might be in church and everything like that, but I think that a lot of uh, the Christians are trying to live this life apart from the word. Mm -hmm. that's and, and that's not going to work. Um, uh, even in uh, Romans, the 15th chapter, I think verse four, it said the things that were written aforetime mm -hmm. were written for our learning that through patience, yes. patience that's good. and comfort of the scripture, yes. we might have hope. But some people are trying to live this Christian life or they're in church. You understand? Mm -hmm. They might be even in ministry, but they're not in that word, and they have, and they're not receiving that word. It says, it says, put away all of the filthiness and superfluity of naughtiness, and receive with meekness yes. the engrafted word, which is able to save our souls. And so you, uh, 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 you're gonna have trials and tribulations, but yes. if you don't have this word. That's not going to work. It, uh, you, you couldn't have said it better mm -hmm. because you cannot Come win mm -hmm. without the word of God. That's right. Matthew 4 and 4 says, man shall not live by bread alone, That's right. but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Mm -hmm. You know, Apostle, we're living in a time where people are losing control of their thoughts. Mm. And, and you have to keep control of your mind mm -hmm. in difficult things like this. Satan wants to overtake your mind. You've heard That's so it. often about your mind is the battleground, you know, but that word of God, it saturates you and it keeps your mind stayed on him. Mm -hmm. And the Bible says he'll keep you in perfect peace. Mm -hmm. And so you got to control your thoughts. You, you, you have to fulfill 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 5 through 7. That's right. It says, right. casting down imaginations yeah. and every high thing that exalt itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Now, when you look at this text, mm -hmm. okay, and you begin to think about Joseph and mm -hmm. his brothers throwing him in the pit with no water, with no expectation of him surviving, mm -hmm. glory to God. You know, we could come to the conclusion from Joseph's circumstances that God was either angry with Joseph mm -hmm. or God had abandoned him altogether, you know? But that was not the case. Mm -hmm. God had a plan. God had a plan. And see, God's got a plan for your life. And so you cannot judge God faithfulness by what you're going through. That's right. You have to judge God's faithfulness by what he has promised. That's right. And, and, and um, somebody said the end of the matter is better than the beginning. And so yes. we see the beginning of Joseph and they throw them in this pit and everything like you're right. And every time we have trials, Bishop, first thing we think about whatever done wrong mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. Uh, the, why is God allowing this to happen to me? And, and God doesn't love me. But whenever we think about the love of God, 
Watch this here. Our mind needs to go back to the cross. Yes, sir. Praise the yes, name sir. of the Lord. Uh, and that's a memorial there forever. Mm -hmm. And so uh, and the Bible says he so loved the world. Yes. You know, he didn't just love the world. Yes. He so loved the world. And sometimes and, and the enemy comes and tells us that, well, if God loves us, he wouldn't be allowing us to go. On the contrary, mm -hmm. you understand what I'm saying? On the contrary, we must... Uh, um, go to the end of the matter. Yeah. The end of the matter will determine and tell us about why all of the other stuff happened. Absolutely. When you look at uh, your own life, mm -hmm. you start thinking about, you know, how difficult things are. Mm -hmm. and, and, and we may think that God has disappeared. Or yeah. Even like you said, God is displeased with us. Mm -hmm. But it has nothing to do with right. that. It has to do with purpose. Mm -hmm. And, and purpose, had not purpose, God purpose. separated Joseph from his family, yeah. his family would have perished in the end. Mm -hmm. And so sometimes, you know, you're going through some things, you're going through some valleys, but God is teaching you. He's strengthening you. He's empowering you for what is to come. God gave us a scripture at the Rivers Ministry in the early part of the year, you know, Isaiah 40, 28, 29. He says, he's give power to the faint to and the faint. to them that have no strength. Them, I don't know, messed it up. He give power. You, you got it, you got it, you got <laughs> it. Them that have no mighty increases their strength. Yeah, yeah. You know? And so sometimes you just need God's strength. Mm -hmm. And when God strengthens you, he empowers you to continue in that journey. Yeah. And so don't get despair. Don't get discouraged. God's still with you in this battle. God is still going to see you through. God is still going to make the way. Mm -hmm. He promised you something and circumstances and situations does not change the promise of God. Actually, they work, they, they work in line with God. You know, see, Joseph, if God would have come to Joseph and said, I want you to go down to Egypt. I want you to become a slave. And, uh, and here's all the things that are going to happen. Jo Joseph would have never done that. You know, he wouldn't have walked away from his family. He was only 17 years old. Mm -hmm. See what I'm saying? And so that's the way God does. God has to move us in a, uh, a way because we're just not going to you know, uh, do it like that way. So God's got ways. But in the end, Joseph got it. Yes, sir. He got it. But he you got know, it. in all of that, mm -hmm. Joseph remained faithful. Yeah. I like that. He he did not get in anguish. Mm -hmm. he, he, he did not turn on God. Mm -hmm. You know, he couldn't understand a lot of things about what God was doing. Doesn't that sound like us? Mm -hmm. God. But he never charged God foolishly. Mm -hmm. When you stop and you look at Job and all that yeah. Job went through, the Bible says that he maintained his integrity, integrity. and he never charged God foolishly. Mm -hmm. they, these men of God never allowed the enemy to put words in their mouth that were foolish. They had to trust God. And the Bible says Abraham, he, and he patiently endured, mm -hmm. he received the promise. Yeah, yeah, and, 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 and that's a lesson for us to learn. We may not understand everything. We don't have to understand everything, but we must know this, that God is a good God. Yes. And hang on to that. Uh, uh, the Bible says that um, in Deuteronomy 29 and 29, he said, uh, there are things that belong to us mm -hmm. um, we can understand, but then there's things that do not belong to us that we can't understand. Mm -hmm. So let's not focus on what we can't understand, but let's focus on what we do understand and what we know about God now. He's a good God yes. no matter what happens. You know, those, that's very good. That's very powerful because if we focus on that which we can understand, mm -hmm. we can understand his love. Yeah, yeah, that's right. We can understand his provision. We mm -hmm. can understand his power. And you know, when we come to know God, whatever we need, according to the word of God, we can call him that. Mm -hmm. We can call him healer. Mm -hmm. We can call him deliverer. Yeah. We can call him way maker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, because all of these things are relative to what we experience in our lives. Mm -hmm. But God has not, will not abandon us. Mm -hmm. When you look at that, at that scripture again, uh, Genesis 39 and 2, mm -hmm. the Lord was with Joseph. That's right. 
Okay. The Lord was with Joseph. He was with Joseph in the pit. He was with Joseph in the prison. Mm -hmm. He was with Joseph in the palace. That's right. And I come to tell you tonight that don't you let the enemy take over your thoughts thinking that God is not there. He's there. You just got to open your mouth and talk to God. Yeah, yeah. And, and you know, sometimes we just think that when we're feeling okay, God is with us. Yes. When we got a little money in our pocket, God is with us. When everything looks like it's going our way, God is with us. But the minute something change, you understand, then we think God is, God is not with us. But you know, the, he's more, watch this here. The Bible all really kind of teaches that he's more with us when things are going wrong. Yeah, he yes. says, the, the, the <laughs> Psalm that says, God is my refuge and my strength, a very present help when I got a little money. No. <laughs> no when everything feels all right. No, he said, a very present help in the time of trouble. Yes, <laughs> that, that, that's such a powerful scripture. Mm -hmm. And you know, t tonight we want you to just stop and think about, yes, many of the affliction of the righteous, but the Lord delivers us out of them all. Mm -hmm. God will heal you. You just got to stay faithful to God. God will deliver you. You just got to stay, stay faithful, faithful to God. God. God's favor is on your life, but you have to stay faithful to God. Mm -hmm. You know, w w when you have faith, you count God faithful. Mm -hmm. When you have fear, you count God as unfaithful mm -hmm. because God's word stands assured. Can't nobody change God's word. That's right. Can't nobody stop God from doing what he has promised he's going to do. Mm -hmm. But sometime when we in the midst of that storm, sometime when we just can't see our way, that's the time when we have to believe what God has said. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, you know, even out through the storm, the, the Psalms, David is te telling us in the time of trouble, yes. he's going to trust God. He's yes. going to wait on God. He's going to... Um, run to God. You mm -hmm. understand that? Mm -hmm. It's no need of running away from God when you're in trouble. You need to run to God. <laughs> Praise the name of the Lord. And That's the right. Bible said, and, and you just said it, he said, and he will deliver us out of them all. Now, we yes. don't believe that, yes. but, but he says it. Yes. And what he says is what he's going to do. And he's, there's no change in God. God mm -hmm. doesn't change because the wind blows left or the wind blows right. We do. Yes. But God is still the same and he doesn't have to change because well, everything has to change around him, but he doesn't have to change. You know, you got to remember that your pit is taking you somewhere. Mm -hmm. You know, Joseph pit took him to the palace, palace. That's right. And put him in position to be able to bless his family at the right time in the right season. Mm -hmm. The problem that I think that we suffer the most, Apostle, is we have not taken the time to build our faith. Mm. You know, we, we, we have to come to the place where we just slow everything down slow everything. and understand that my faith has got to be strong when my storm come. Mm -hmm. my, my faith has got to be strong when my phantom come. That's right. my, my faith has got to be strong when my weakness come. That's right. And the Bible says all things are possible to okay. them that believe. You know, Mark, he wrote it. He says, listen, have faith in God. He says, whatever you ask when you pray, believe, you shall receive it. And I think that the enemy has us focusing on everything but building our faith. Yeah. And, and, and you know, uh, that, that, that's, that's it. That's it. If we're going to please God without faith, it's impossible. If we're going to bring glory to God, uh, our faith must be strong. Um, it's from faith to faith, Bishop. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's not from faith to doubt, faith to unbelief, faith to fear. No, we got to start after a while building our faith to where it's steady, to where it's from faith to faith. And, and, and every time we see somebody acting in faith, we see God working miracles and even God marveling. And, and God is so happy when he sees that we have believed the truth. You're so, you're so right. You know, <laughs> I, I submit to you tonight 
that God is with you, mm -hmm. just as he was with Joseph. Mm -hmm. And all the time you can't feel him. All the time you can't see him. Mm -hmm. All the time he's not going to be talking to you because the just live by uh, faith. faith. You have to live by what you have come to know that's of right. God mm -hmm. through your relationship that, with God. That's right, that's okay? right. God is not a man that he should lie, neither the son of man that he should repent. He says, my word has went out and it will not return to me void. It will accomplish whatever I send it out to do. But the people of God must slow down, take out time mm -hmm. and build, develop and practice their faith. Yeah, because if we don't, watch this here, we may not from our mouth call God a liar, but from our action, we'll be saying that he's a liar against his word. You're so right. Jude tells us that we must contend for the faith that was once delivered to the saints. Mm -hmm. You know, when you got faith, you know what to do. Mm -hmm. You go and pray until God strengthens you. Mm -hmm. They that wait upon the Lord, he shall renew their strength. You know, and so we are living now, don't, don't mistake this thing. We mm. are living now in perilous times. Perilous time. Look at our country, mm -hmm. look at our neighborhoods, look at our communities, you know, look at the things that are going on around us, but mm -hmm. God has not changed. God has not changed. The promises of God are yea and amen, and with them there is no sorrow. But we have to build our faith and know God has not abandoned us. And when mm -hmm. you know God hasn't abandoned you, you can praise him regardless. Mm -hmm. And in our text, uh, it's obvious that Joseph, he rather not knew where he was going, Bishop, but at least he knew that God was somehow still with him and he wouldn't relinquish his faith in the trials that he came. You, are, you remember yes. some of the trials yes. he had, yes. right? Yes. Especially yes. with Mrs. Potiphar's wife, yes. right? Yes, yes. Yeah, he, uh, and we got to do the same thing too. We can't relent. We may not know, but we don't have to relent, relent out of that what we do know. Yes, you don't have to sin. You mm -hmm. don't have to give in. Mm -hmm. You don't even have to doubt in your mind. You know, Psalms 46 and 1, Apostle, you gave reference to it earlier. God is our refuge. Mm -hmm and our strength very. and a very present help in trouble. I know you're going through some things. I know there's some uncertainties in your life, even struggles of trying to wonder where God is. I know even sometimes you pray and it just seems like that there is no answer. God is taking his time. Don't you get weary in well-doing. Mm -hmm. You shall reap if you faint not. You faint Keep not. seeking the face of God. Keep believing in the promises of God. Yeah. God knows what he's doing. Job said it like this. He knoweth the way that I take. Mm -hmm. He know my uprising mm -hmm. and my down setting. That's right. And as long as God know where you are, you're going to be okay. You got 10 seconds. <laughs> yeah, well, I don't know what I can say in 10 seconds, but I can say, hold on, hold on to God. Watch this here. I don't care. Job, watch this. He said, I'm just going to wait until my change come. Absolutely. We're men of integrity and we are praying for your miracle. Come and join us in any of our services. Mm -hmm. You will have a life changing experience. God bless you now. Out of your bed, out of your, 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 out